In the journey of your baby's first year of life, you'll witness astonishing growth and development. But how as parents do we know our baby is on track with these critical developmental achievements? In the traditional medical world, these milestones serve as markers for tracking a child's growth and identifying potential concerns at an early stage. But with no two babies being exactly alike, many babies don't reach milestones at certain months or when compared to others. If this is a question you commonly ask yourself, you are not alone. So many parents want to make sure their babies are eating, sleeping, pooping, and moving when and how much they should. Plus these milestones are progressing to bigger accomplishments in speech, socialization, behavioral, and learning. This video is for you mom and dad to use as a roadmap to help ease any worries, know what to look for, how and when, and not feel overwhelmed, especially as a first time parent and how your baby is growing and developing. The most important thing we can share with you in this video is this, the order in which your child goes through these milestones matters far more than when they achieve them. So I hear all the time where parents are excited their child started walking at nine months, but they skipped crawling or parents are concerned their child isn't crawling, walking, etc. at the same time other kids are. And to me, it's more troublesome for a child to skip a stage of development or miss a milestone altogether than it is to be slightly delayed. So for example, skipping crawling is more troublesome and problematic to their overall brain and neurological development than being a couple of months late in talking, walking, and so forth. So as mentioned above, we are more concerned with the order in which these milestones and developmental stages happen and how well they are linked or coordinated together. So. Looking at the things on the calendar by age helps us become aware of how potential challenge or developmental delay, but it does nothing to help us identify the root cause of that problem and develop an action plan to help get your baby back on track. So to keep it simple, the development of the nervous system happens in two basically primary phases. Phase one is the foundation of development for your precious baby. So these phases include eating, this involves their latch, swallow and digestion, second is sleep, how they soothe and call themselves, third is pooping, so motility and absorption, and lastly movement, which is the motor milestones, head and neck control, sitting up, rolling over, crawl, walk, running and jumping. And then phase two is considered the finishings, and this is a phase where the more advanced and complex brain and neurological functions come into play. And phase two consists of speech and communication, socialization and play, behavioral and emotional regulation, cognitive and learning, and before these more advanced brain and neurological functions that are central for a child's success and social and school situations can develop and function properly, the foundational basics must be fully developed and healthy. So therefore, if a child still struggles with sleep, constipation, or immune health, they will luckily, likely continue to stay stuck and delayed in their social speech and cognitive development as well. So as significant transformations happen quickly, it's helpful to keep an eye on important baby milestones, but it's not the end all be all. So as we started with the most important component of optimal brain and neurological development in babies is not when they reach a milestone as much as it is in what order or sequence they do it. So it's more beneficial to closely monitor the following key signs in your baby, as they may indicate a softer sign that a baby's nervous system is working too hard and is at risk of falling behind developmentally. So frequent stiffening, arching, head and neck cranking, excessive crying, difficulty standing, and inability to stand or stand independent by 12 months, skipping crawling altogether, or quickly moving from crawling to standing, with a stiff, intense posture and last persistent struggles with sleep, digestion, and immune function, or excessive crying and distress with reduced eye contact, smiling, interaction, babbling, and imitating sounds. So where do these challenges all come from? So the number one factor that we see over and over again that contributes to missed baby milestones is birth trauma, which affects crucial brainstem and cerebellum regions and their wildly important role in developmental milestones. So birth is traumatic for your baby for numerous reasons, including the baby's position in utero, the duration of the birth process, or birth interventions such as C-section, vacuum, forceps, and these all cause high levels of physical tension on the delicate tissues of the brainstem and upper neck, 
which house the vagus nerve and are responsible for autonomic nervous system regulation and function, motor tone and coordination, immune and digestive function, and so much more. So the impact of these various physical stressors on a developing infant's nerve and muscles in the head, neck, and upper torso is significant. So this leads to what we call subluxation, which is the most underestimated and overlooked aspect when considering developmental delays and neurodevelopmental challenges in babies and children later on in life as well. So if your baby's displaying signs of colic, reflux, constipation, or is having difficulty sleeping or eating, these are all indication that there may be subluxation affecting your baby's nervous system. So when your baby's nervous system is subluxated and they're in a sympathetic dominated state or fight or flight, that stops and limits development and milestone progression. So this neurologic imbalance is known as its own condition called dysautonomia. And as renowned cellular biologist and leading epigenetic researcher, Dr. Bruce Lipton perfectly states, you can't be in growth and protection at the same time. So if your baby is stuck in this sympathetic fight or flight mode, they can't also be in growth and development mode, which by far is the dominant mode your baby is supposed to be in and stay in for quite a while. So how can chiropractic help? It all starts with finding out to what degree and where precisely within your baby's nervous system their tension and subluxations lie. So we always start with an in-depth case history and examination of your baby and also utilize incredible technology called Insight Scans. So these scans take only a couple minutes to use, are entirely safe and non-invasive, and help find exactly where those areas of altered tone and tension are. So baby milestones can involve so much and the rapidly developing brain and nervous system are quite intricate systems. So helping babies so early gives them the right sequence and momentum to grow on. So first, please ask any questions or leave a comment below or send us a DM.